Well, good morning, everybody. It's a great day to be here, a great day to celebrate and to worship our Lord and Savior. We're going to start with this first song. And, and if, if you just want to make this your prayer, to, but to make it a, a chance to prepare our hearts and our minds to worshiping our, our Lord. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It is rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It is rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with its glory. Well, what a great day today is. It's a day that we can come and celebrate and worship our Lord and Savior. Just a few announcements. Uh, number one is um, I'm actually not preaching today. Amen. No, hi. <laughs> uh, we want to welcome uh, Mike Felton from Journey Lutheran. Mike is the director of family ministry there. Uh, and he is preparing himself in June because he has to pass Greek uh, to head off to seminary. And, and so we get a great opportunity of, of kind of welcoming him, welcoming him here, but also giving him an opportunity to prepare himself. When he gets into his preaching classes and, and the homiletics classes, he is actually going to have to have sermons prepared. He's going to have to write some, present them, preach them, um, sometimes just to his class, to his, his prof, and sometimes to a congregation. And so we just kind of want to help him out. This gives him a, a chance just to continue to work at it. Um, it it's not easy. 
It's, it, it's a lot of work, a lot of time going in and, and, and to trying to figure it out and just hearing what God's word has to say and, 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 and focusing in on this. Um, he, he shared the message this, this morning already at our nine, did an absolutely out, outstanding job. The word of God is just amazing and, and the opportunity we get to hear how God is leading him in, in this topic in, in our, even in our series of how do we live in unity with others and, and how does that make it joyful in our lives. So we're going to thank Mike um, for that. When he is done with his message, we're going to pray over him. And I'm going to ask you uh, as a congregation not just to pray over him today, but pray over him each and every day. Pray for Mike as he is preparing Pray for all the seminary students and the deaconess that, that are preparing to go out into these congregations and serve in, in, in different ways uh, and, and, and just bringing glory to God and sharing the gospel. So we will be doing that here once the message is done. Also, just a, a couple other things. It is Lutheran Schools Week. And what a great, great opportunity we have. And so our, our preschool is going to be celebrating what Lutheran Schools Week and, and what Lutheran Schools are all about and, and taking the concept of, of the theme of connect. And so they have created this little sheet out there. Um, it is for preschoolers, so that's what it looks like, but it is absolutely amazing. An opportunity for us, e even though uh, we can look at it and say, well, it's meant for the preschool kids, but we can look at that and, and, and see how we are connected to Christ through the scriptures, through his creation, through the fruits of the spirit. I, I encourage you to take one and each day go through it and, and just kind of use this maybe just as a, an opportunity of something that if you don't know what to pray about, you can pray about this. And then starting tomorrow, um, tomorrow and Tuesday, we are going to be feeding them lunch here. Um, our preschool is just a great way of just celebrating them. We have chicken nuggets and, and applesauce and chips and, and, and Rice Krispie treats. We got a great, great meal for them, just an opportunity to come. And they're going to be coming up here to, to the gathering place and sitting at the big tables and, and having a meal. Um, if you would like to help in, in any way yet, we could still use your help. It, about 11.15... Monday and Tuesday, if you want to show up, we'll be done. By the time we get everything cleaned up, it'll be done by about 12 um, or a little bit before. If you would like to come and help serve, um, just come and just welcome the kids. We'd love to have you. Uh, just show up. Don't need to sign up. Just show up. We, we'd love to have you if you are available. Well, we understand that there are things that are happening, but if you are uh, uh, open to it and can help, we'd love to have you. So thank you for doing that. Also for our bigger kids, we have been working kind of through and, and starting to think, okay, what do we need to do? We have our children's corner. We have coloring pages and books and, and, and great. Th those things have been awesome. But we're also looking at now how do we start preparing uh, really for, for confirmation and, and for moving forward with things. And so we are starting this thing. We've, we've got a, a, a new book in, um, and we're going to be printing them here. There are 36 units in, in this, but it's all about trying to get people prepared um, you know, for pre-confirmation in, into that step in, into what's next. And, and there, there are lessons here. And this one is on the existence of God and, and why we believe in God. And not only does it, does it give you some thoughts, but it gives you Bible passages and, and it makes you get into Scripture. I am, have no problems for you older people. If you would like to do this with them, we can make more. We have five copies printed right now, but we can always make more if, if people would like to take them and take them home and go through them themselves. Um, I, I went through this first one um, when we got the book, and it, it is absolutely fantastic. It is actually a, a great way of diving into Scripture and seeing how, it, when we look at the existence of God, how in Scripture it is all over. I think we tend to look at uh, sometimes just in Genesis about this, but it is, it is throughout Scripture we can see why we believe in God and who God is and what does that truly mean for us. And so I encourage you, um, if you would like to do this with them, you can. Um, but we have this as an offering. So if you have grandchildren and, and you want something, you want to bring them here, or uh, you know friends that have older children and you want to bring them here and they need something, we have these over there in the children's corner uh, on the, um, what do you call it? What do you call those things? You know, pardon me? Well, it's on the bookshelf, but it's clipboard. clipboard. Thank you. I knew the word. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, on the clipboard um, that are not in the bin, they're, they're there for them. Right. So we want to worship. We want to celebrate. We want to focus our attention on to our God. We want to give him all glory. And so I invite you, if you this time, if you would please stand.
We make our beginning like we do each and every day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages To the Lamb And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers, and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever If you've been forgiven and if you've been redeemed sing the song forever to the Lamb if you walk in freedom and if you bear his name sing the song forever to the Lamb We'll sing the song forever and amen. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy. sing holy to the king of kings holy you will always be holy holy forever your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all jesus your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, holy to the King of kings, holy, you will always be.
So let's confess our Christian faith. Let's do it together as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you, and, and you will become fishers of men. And immediately they left the nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, let us bow before the Holy One. Come, let us confess God's might. Come, let us feel God's mercy. Come, let us As God's people, we lift our voices in praise. Glory to you, Jesus, the God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Philippians chapter 2. This will be the basis of our message. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy. Complete my joy by being the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or con conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. Morning. Pastor Terry, do you have the clicker back there for me? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll do that to start. Is this it? Yes. Brian, nice. Well, it's great to be with you uh, here this morning. Uh, if you need a reminder, uh, my name's Mike. I'm the director of family ministry at Journey in Oxford and uh, headed to seminary this summer. So I've had the opportunity uh, at a few congregations uh, to share, share the word, uh, a little practice, and uh, just, just be with uh, different groups of people in the name of Christ. And it, it's been an absolute joy for me uh, during this time. And uh, whenever I go to a new place, I like to share a little bit about 
myself. Got to turn it on. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> there we go. Whenever I go to a new place, I like to, to share a little bit about myself. I like to uh, maybe get a little bit more familiar. And what I want to share with you today is that I'm a little bit busy. And I think that we can all uh, identify with that feeling uh, of being busy, of ha having a lot going on in our lives. And the reason I'm busy right now, it's along with my mission at, at Journey and ministry, I, I picked up a, kind of a side job. I'm, I'm the basketball coach at St. John in Rochester, right down the road. And uh, that, that's made my schedule a little bit more busy, a little bit more full. But it brings me a lot of joy. It is really the, the Felton family business. My dad has coached basketball for a very long time. My grandfather, before him, coached basketball for 30 plus years. It, it brings me a lot of joy to be a coach. And, and if you spend time around coaches and sports teams, I won't bore you with too much sports talk. I'll just bore you with a little bit of sports talk. I, you, you start to figure out that every coach and every team is very similar. They, they have similar conversations. They have similar uh, discussions about uh, what, what they want their team to be. And a lot of times, they'll, they'll talk about something called chemistry, right? How do we get along with each other? How are we unified together as one team? And like I said, many coaches speak in the same way about this unity. I'll, I'll give you a few examples here. Maybe you'll recognize these guys. Our goal is not to win, it's a quote. It's to play together and play hard. Then winning takes care of itself. This is Coach K, Mike Shashet from Duke University, one of the greatest basketball coaches of all time. Our goal is to play together with one another, and the winning takes care of itself. Or this one. When a gifted team dedicates itself to unselfish trust and combines instinct with bold, boldness and effort, it is ready to find. That's Pat Riley, longtime NBA coach and general manager, talking about unselfish trust, unity with one another. Then we're ready to make the climb. Or maybe you've heard this one teamwork makes the dream work. Maybe you've even said that one at a church cleanup day or, or something like that, where we know that many hands make light work, and the unity of that work makes things go faster. It, it, it's common, right? It's common in teams, it's common in groups of people to talk about unity and chemistry with one another. But in each of these teams, in each of these groups of people, they always have three things. Three things that every team or group of people has. Motivation, execution, and a goal. And a team's motivation might be based in their coach or a team captain or, or the team as a whole. Or they might simply be motivated by, their, by reaching their goal. Where teams start to, to differ is in their execution of things, right? They'll run different plays or sets, or they'll practice differently, they'll play differently. But where teams are very similar, their goal. And their goal is that big trophy, right? That state championship, that Super Bowl ring. Go Lions. And uh, they, they all search after this same... Thing. They want the immortality, quote unquote, that comes with hanging the banner, with winning the trophy, with being in history. And really what this is, is it's worldly unity. It's simple unity, trivial unity. It's not that difficult to get a group of men or women focused on winning, focused on glory. The, the unity that we see in the world, as rare as it might be, is usually very simple. People coming from the same backgrounds, people having the same opinions, people having the same mind together because of where they come from and the goals that they're up against. But we're not here to talk about worldly unity. We're not here to talk about simple unity. We're here to talk about unity as followers of Jesus, unity in Christ, unity in the church. And this unity is, is complicated. It's difficult. Because 
along with, with Crown of Life Lutheran Church, there are churches across the world that we are told and commanded to have unity with. How do we go about finding this unity despite our differences in opinions and practices? Well, God doesn't leave us alone. He never does. And, and I, I'd ask you right now to turn to Philippians chapter 2 in your pew Bibles or your phones or wherever you might have it. And as we do that, our, our strategy right now as we look at our unity, we're going to look at those three things, those three things that every team has and, and how that can apply to our lives as we look to be a unified church in Christ. So just like motivation, execution, and goal, we have the same thing. But it looks a little bit different and it, when it's unity under Christ. So start, to start, we're going to talk about our motivation, and, and I'll begin to read here as uh, Paul starts chapter 2. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, he says, any comfort from love, any particip participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, so if there is. Paul asks four rhetorical questions. He knows the answer to these questions already. He says, if there is any encouragement in Christ... If there is any comfort from love, if there is any participation in the Spirit, if there's any affection and sympathy, if the promises and blessings of Christ affect who you are, if these things are the case, if you are changed through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in your hearts, if you are born again, Paul knows when he writes to the Philippians that these things are true. Paul knows... God knows that when we hear these words, that those things are true. Our motivation for unity, as Paul lined up for us here in Philippians chapter 2, is the blessings received through Christ. Through Christ we have received encouragement. Through Christ we have received the promise of the Holy Spirit. We've experienced love, affection, and sympathy like no other. We are motivated towards this unity through the promises and blessings received only through Christ crucified. So that's our motivation. Our, our motivation is all that we have already received. But our execution is a little bit more than that. I'll continue here in verse 2. So if, he says, so if you have received these things, complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Paul uses this language of, of the same mind. What he doesn't mean in this verse, he, he doesn't mean to fall into a blind conformity. He doesn't mean to shut your mind off, to, to uh, join in on groupthink and, and just not explore the things of God anymore. Just do as you're told. He doesn't say that. What he's calling us to here is a radical unity, a radical obedience of the commands of Christ, a radical love of one another. And if we all have this same mind of radical obedience to Christ, what follows comes in these next verses. He says in verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. So when we have this mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. When we have this same mind, we start to act differently. Paul says to do nothing of selfish ambition. Do nothing to prop yourself up as number one. Do nothing in your, your actions to show that you are the one that matters, but rather look to the interests of those around you. Do nothing out of conceit. Look not to be the main character of your own story, but look to the needs of those around you. And, and if you're looking for disunity in the world, it's not hard to find. And usually, a lot of times, disunity stems from selfish actions, from conceited actions, from groups or from individuals. Paul knows this. God knows this. And he tells us to avoid that selfish ambition, that conceit. 
but in humility. Count others more significant than yourselves. This is countercultural unity. It, it was in the time of Paul writing this letter. It is in America today. This is countercultural. To not be in character, to put yourself not first, but to put others ahead of yourself. And as I read this, and as I prepared for this message today, I struggle with this. I struggle to put others first. I ask, God, how can we possibly be asked to constantly and radically obey this commandment to put others first? And things in Scripture, the example comes from our Savior. I'll continue here, verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ, that same mind, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If you're looking for an example of this radical humility, of this incredible sacrifice we are asked to take on, look no further than our Savior, who as God emptied himself of that power, humbled himself, and came to earth to live, die for you. When he was on the cross, he held all of that disunity that our world is plagued with. He held it on his shoulders, and he died, so that we might no longer be slaves to this disunity, but free to experience against the love and unity that happen only through our Savior crucified. Our execution of this unity is sacrificial service of one another. Radical humility, countercultural humility, sacrificing and dying to self in order to love one another, in order to unify. So our motivation is the blessings and the promises received through Christ Jesus. Our execution is sacrificial service and incredible humility in our hearts. So what's our goal? What's our goal? You might, you might think to yourself, well, our goal is unity. But, it, but it's even more than that. But it's even more than that. I'm going to turn to John 17. John 17. We're starting at verse 20 if you want to turn with me. I do not ask for these only. This is Jesus' priestly prayer he prays in John. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. They also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may, they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. I'm going to read verse 23 one more time. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. Jesus prays this prayer. And in this prayer, he shows us what our goal is in unity. He shows us that not only is it the unity itself, but it's the glory of God shown to the world through our unity. When we execute this unity, when we sacrifice ourselves, when we humble ourselves and show love to others through our words and our deeds, we glorify God in the world. Because this unity is countercultural, it's different. It makes people look twice and say, why are those people acting in together when our world is falling apart in disunity? And the answer to that is Christ. The answer to that is the Spirit working in our hearts. Paul echoes this in Romans. He says, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul's prayer in Romans and for the church as a whole, but it's our prayer today that God may grant us the endurance, the spirit 
in our hearts so that with one voice, one voice of the same mind, we may glorify God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, the world around us. Our motivation for unity comes in the promises and the blessings that Christ has given us. Our execution comes through sacrificial service and, and humility that we get to witness in our Savior. And our goal is the glory of God. And the best thing about how this brings us joy is if we go back to sports teams, their trophies and their Super Bowls and whatever it might be will pass away. I mean, who won the Super Bowl five years ago? I don't know. This glory of God on earth, eternity with our Heavenly Father and our Savior, that will never pass away. So when we talk about joy and unity, we talk about joy with But we talk about the glory of God and eternity with our Savior. So as we move forward today, as we search after this unity, remember our motivation, how we execute this unity in sacrificial service, and the joy that we find in our goal, the glory of God on earth. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings, for all that we received through Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Father, help us to be motivated by that love. Help us in our execution to sacrifice ourselves, to die, to sin, and to live in the righteousness of your Son. And Father, we thank you for the joy that comes only through your glory on earth. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as he is preparing to head off to seminary this summer, let's lift him up because God is going to work through him. And, and as the theme for Lutheran Schools Week is being connected, we will always be connected to him. Not, not only as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, but just knowing that he shared a message with us that we can take and we can live and it can transform our lives forever. Would you join me in prayer? Let's pray for him. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the message that, that you put into Mike's heart. Thank you, uh, Lord, for leading him, for calling him. And now he, as, as a youth director, as a, a director of family ministry, but, but Lord, also as one that is, feels the calling to go and to serve you as a pastor. Lord, walk with him. Let the studies go smooth. Let the word of God flow through him. Let the gospel message come from his lips each and every moment. Lord, we are certainly blessed because of him. We are blessed because you brought him into our lives. You've connected him with us. Now, Lord, as he goes, let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate the words. Let, let's live to the glory that we can have unity to all people through you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in Mike's life. Continue to walk. Bless him. And as he prepares for this transition, Lord, make it smooth and easy. We pray this, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. So as we go through this now, I'm going to invite you to please stand and let's come before our Lord as we prepare our hearts and minds in this time of confession. When we think about all these things that God has done, we want to take this posture that he has called us to do. We want to take this posture of, of confession. If our heart says cry, we want you to cry. If, if you just need to lament, lament. If, you, if there's joy uh, because he's answered a prayer, you can, you can celebrate. But we bring it before him. We lay it before the cross. And so let's bring it to our God in this time. God of patience, your people grow weary. We complain and we question. We put you to the test and our, our mouths say yes, but our deeds, well, they say no. When we wander off your path, when we fail to follow through your good intentions, when we give our attention to trivial things, gently call us back to you. 
Help us to turn around. Empty our hearts of anger and pride. Empty our souls of greed and selfishness. Empty our minds of envy and doubt and mistrust. And as you pour out your very self through your beloved son, pour your spirit into our hearts today. Heavenly Father, forgive us of our wrongdoings. Reclaim us with your love. Help us know everything that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. As we just now just take a few moments, Lord, we're going to lay it before you. And Lord, you, you hear that. Sanctify me, clean out my closet, and take away anything that is not pleasing to you. Purify me. Destroy all my anger and wash away everything that is not pleasing to you. I will be white as snow, I will be pure as gold. Jesus, my heart must know I'm pleasing to you. I give my life, my all. Taking the cross, I will follow. Jesus, my heart must know. I'm pleasing to you. Sanctify me. You are the light to guide me to the place where I am only pleasing to you. Purify me, I need your light inside me, so the darkness flees and I can be pleasing to you. So come make me white as snow, Lord make me pure. Jesus, my heart must know I'm pleasing to you. I give my life, my all, taking the cross, I will follow. Jesus, my heart must know I'm pleasing to you. Jesus, my heart must know I'm pleasing to you. Although we deserve his present and eternal punishment, God has relented by sending his son 
to bear our sin and to be our Savior. Christ has taken our punishment at the, on the cross, paid the price of our sins through his perfect life and sacrificial death. And for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, it is my joy today to announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. This time we're going to collect our noisy offering. Moms, dads, kids, if you would like to do this, you can. Um, just remember, we're, we're looking at how that might, how that smallest of change does wonders when used for the glory of God. So if you have any change and you want to bring it up, we will collect that at this time. What a great sound that is. That sound knowing that we have given our gifts, our talent, our treasures for the glory of God. And so we're going to celebrate that in this time of prayer. And as we pray, we're, we're going to lift up also the mission money that our church has been given. We prayed for them last week. We're going to continue to pray for them for, for many, many weeks because we want the glory of God to be shared. We, we, want, we want to lift up these places knowing that the gifts that we have given what will do wonders for the kingdom. So I invite you, if you would, please stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you knowing that you are an amazing God. That through you, through, through all that you've done in us, through your spirit, that you've kept us into that one mind so that we can have unity. That we can find joy in that. That we can look at others. That we can, we can celebrate others together. Lord, help us Help us to, 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 to love all people that you've called us to do. Help, help us to, 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 to understand that your presence in our hearts, in our lives, helps us to see people differently. That we, we know that they are your children. But then, Lord, help each one of us to share that gospel, to spread that gospel news so that others can grow in your name. Lord, we give you all glory, thanks, and praise for everything that you've done. We pray for those that, that are sick, that are hurting, that need your comfort. We lift up Anita and Amy and Becca, Kathy, Kurt, Sue, Tara, and King. For Bob, Carol, Clarence, Fred, Heinke, Ryder, Susan, and Terry. For Bill, who is undergoing tests, and, and they're trying to rule things out of what is causing some issues right now for him. Lord, we just ask that you comfort them, you, you give them peace, you, you heal them according to your will. We lift up the family of Pia, who, who is, is grieving a loss of a family member. Thank you for that you've given her the opportunity to travel to where the family members are, to be part of that celebration of life, to rejoice in grace and eternal life, one. And as she comes home, Lord, grant her safe travel. Let, let her return to her loved ones here soon. Heavenly Father, we, we lay before you these, these organizations that, that we as Crown of Life have sent money to. May, may each penny, may each little coin do wonders for your kingdom. Lord, we know it was given in your glory, in your name. We lift up gifts for all God's children and, and the organization that, that has been put into this and the people and the families and these kids that have been affected by this. Heavenly Father, continually pour out your blessings upon them that the work that they do will, will just grow your kingdom. We pray for our seminaries, both in St. Louis and in Fort Wayne, as they continue to prepare uh, pastors and deaconess for, for your work in the church. 
Lord, give them strength and courage to boldly proclaim the gospel, to never, never waver from the, the trueness of Scripture, from your word. Lord, bless the, these men and women that are, are preparing to go out and serve in many different ways. Give them strength and courage. Help them in their studies. And Lord, help them understand that they are giving you all glory and praise through the gospel. We pray for the, the, the students and families, the, the teachers, the administrators, the, the, the friends of, of Lutheran High School Northwest. Lord, we give you thanks for, for the opportunity of not only learning and growing in, in subject matter, but, but Lord, for, for your kingdom, that, that you have been shared in all things and in all ways. Lord, continually bless them so that you can be seen through these students and families and teachers and administrators, through, through everyone, these friends of the school, that you will be seen to this wonderful community around us. And Heavenly Father, we give you all glory and thanks and praise for our Michigan district. As, as they have many organizations and, and mission congregations within their hands. Lord, the money we're sending, we want that to be used for these congregations so that they can continue to grow. They can continue to reach out and, and share the gospel message to those around them. So that they can bring in the pastor or the deaconess or the youth worker, that they can use these people with their gifts and talents to help celebrate you with those around. Thank you for the leadership of, of, of President Davis and for those on his staff as they continually work for the good of Michigan. Heavenly Father, we celebrate Adita and Roger as they have birthdays this week. Continually grant them just health, and continually walk with them with this next year of life as they celebrate you. Lord, it's, it's just a, it's a pleasure to see them. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to talk to them. It's humbling just to see how they serve you through many different ways. Thank you, Lord, for walking with them and blessing them. All these things, Lord, we lay before you. And even the things that in our hearts and minds that we may not have said, we know that you hear as we pray that absolutely perfect prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On the night when he was prayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And together in assurance, we can say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may it strengthen and preserve you from this day forth forevermore. Knowing that he lives in you. We have unity with him. We can go and share that same love and grace that he has given us with others. And so we celebrate that today. We celebrate the opportunity to go and share with those that God has placed in our path. And we are never alone. He walks with us. And so as we pray this prayer, let us pray knowing that God is leading us each and every moment. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Teach me what you want me to know. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no evil. For my God is with me And if my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. I can see a life that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious life beyond all compare. There will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you're here on the earth and I will fear no evil for my God is with me and if my God is with me whom then shall I fear whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go Every high and every low Oh no, you never let go, Lord You never let go of me Singing, oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go In every high and every low Oh no, never let go, Lord Never let go of me I can see a light that is coming For the heart that holds on there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you, Lord. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go. And every high and every low, oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the 
storm Oh no, He never let go In every high and every low Oh no, He never let go Lord, never let go of me He never let go of me Brothers and sisters, let's thank Mike for his time today, and also we pray blessings upon him. He is going to be taking off just instantly. He has to get to Frankenmuth because he has to coach basketball, you know, that side job. So, Mike, get out of here. Thank you so much. God's blessings be with you, and we continue to pray for you. Also, I just want to take a moment and thank Tom for being here also and playing the piano and leading us in music here at the, the, the earlier service in this one, too. God is good. God is good. It's just blessing us. So go in peace and serve the Lord. And together we say, thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody. Okay, it's just because I was dumb and totally forgot. Are you going to be here next week? Because we have three-year-olds next week. Do you want to get three-year-olds? Okay, we'll do it next week. Sorry about that. I totally, like, I had, yeah, just use that one. Yeah, I totally.